Lewis here with Mudge Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today, I am building something from the Indiana Jones series. Recently, the new Indiana Jones released, I believe June 30th, and I wanted to build something from the movie, but I haven't seen it yet, so I thought, why not take a dive into the old movie since I haven't built anything from it yet. Going into ideas, there are a lot of awesome props that I could be building, the idols, the tablets, the whips, the shields maybe future build uh, but as i was looking it kind of hit me in an opening scene in the raiders of the lost ark india's doing that classic swapping the statue for the sandbag thing and in the background there is these little wall traps they are uh, carved into the walls they have little holes where the darts would shoot out their eyeballs and i thought why not build one of those? That would be a cool wall hang and I could make it look like stone and mossy and old. So today we are building a temple wall trap from Indiana Jones out of foam. Let's get to building. Free template in the description. This template is fairly large, printed out and taped together. The pattern is about 15 inches by 15 inches or 38.1 by 38.1 centimeters for my metric friends. There are a lot of labels on the pattern to help you, but I will dive deeper into that in a minute. I use some very thick foam with the most being 48 millimeters thick. I used EVA foam because that's what I have on hand and plenty of. A good alternative to this could be like that pink insulation foam or if you wanted to be adventurous, rock or wood I guess. I trace the pattern onto my foam thicknesses needed then cut off the bits I don't need for the next layer. The only real tricky part is the nose which bridges between multiple layers. I took some pictures along the way to hopefully help better explain the writing that's on the template pieces. Starting on the top left and working across, I would trace the pattern onto the thickness of foam. When I was done, I'd cut off that portion that I didn't need anymore and then trace it onto the next. I tried to label individual parts with the thickness of foam I used, so hopefully with these pictures and the stuff on the template, it'll all make sense.
The first layer gets glued to the thick base with a little contact cement. You apply the glue to both pieces, let it sit for a couple of minutes, then once it's no longer wet, tack them together. Any part that sits proud of the base can be sanded back. The blue lines are areas that I need to burn in a groove with my wood burner. You could also just cut these bits out if you would prefer. I wanted to carry over the grooves on the top to the sides, so I already had the wood burner out and ready to go. Make sure to wear a respirator and work in a well-ventilated area while burning or sanding foam. You don't want to breathe this stuff in. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but I really like carving away at the foam to bring the flat dimensions into shape, so here we are. The forehead, the cheek slash jaw area, and the nose are carved out of more of that 48 millimeter EVA. You could stack this stuff up if you didn't have that thickness, so you know, like five layers of 10 millimeter would get you there. I get mine from TNT Cosplay Supply Online for the thick stuff. Using a box cutter, I start to chop chunk out the sides to make them more rounded. Once the basic shape is achieved, you could use a rotary tool to refine it and a stone bit to smooth it all over. I went outside and used my belt sander to even out all my edges. Next two layers are ready to go. I mark where the next piece will lay down and contact cement it up so that I don't waste a bunch of glue. So the base layer is 48 millimeters, a six millimeter layer on top of it. The layer of just the head is 10 millimeters and really it's just there to add the ear detail and I guess kind of to help with spacing on the next parts. The forehead, cheek, and nose are 48 millimeters. So in total it stands about about five inches, five and a half inches tall. Uh, yeah, it's pretty thick. The eye band recesses in, so it's only a 24 millimeter thick layer. To get the nose to sit on the step down to the eyes, I had to cut a step on the bottom of the nostril area. If this is too complicated, you could easily just cut a chunk to fill the gap between the bridge of the nose and the forehead.
Over the top of the recessed eye ridges are some 10 millimeter overlays. Once I had those in place, I laid down my six millimeter cheek overlays. You may notice a rough texture over everything as I started building it up. I wanted to do that as I go so that it was easier to reach in some of the corners. I am just randomly gouging out areas with my rotary tool. With the cheek and eye bits in place, I know where the mouth and the nose pieces will fit in now. With the carving of the nose, I figure the mouth bit may be a little off, so I wanted to wait until now to carve out that extra little nostril part in it. I put a bevel on the edge so that it transitions a little better between everything and then glue them into place. Since the template is flat, and depending on how you carve the forehead, the overlay piece that goes down the center will not fit because there's an extra bit of distance added now. I knew it would be a problem, but I waited until this point to solve the issue. I cut another chunk of 10 millimeter foam and traced the top of the pattern. Then I slid the object down, trying to keep it centered, and then drew the bottom. Then I simply connected those two points. Now I have an elongated piece that I can bridge the gap and can trim it to size to fit perfectly. If you're ever trying to make stuff up as you go, this is a great solution if you know what the end point needs to be and the other side needs to be. Last for the build portion is adding the tongue and the teeth to the inside of the mouth. Because these are small bits that only touch the base surface in random spots, I switched over to super glue for this attachment. I did cut an angle on the bottom side of the tongue and the teeth so that it angled outward from the mouth. Other than the random gouges to make the surface rough, I wanted to give more of an old rock texture, kind of like a porous holes, so I'm going to burn these in with a wood burner. With my respirator on and an air purifier going full blast just off to the side of me, I begin tediously burning out tiny holes and pock marks all over the surface. I try and make it as random as I possibly can so there's not any detectable pattern. I also include random cracks as I went. Before I spray paint everything, I drilled out the eye holes and drilled in some even holes on the back side that nails could uh, be you know, hung on so it'll sit on a wall. Yeah.
two coats of Plasti Dip to seal the foam. I then use textured spray paint to help fill some of the seams and add a bit of variation. Once done, I spray painted it gray. You may notice a spackle texture of black and light gray. I didn't record this, but I guess I'll explain it here. The way that you achieve this using a spray can is to barely put any pressure on the cap and it'll sputter out paint. Typically you try and avoid this, but if you're trying to make a rock texture with varying colors, this is a good effect. Now I'm ready to dirty this freshly foam carved trap with some watered down black and brown acrylic paint sloppily mixed. Push the paint down into all the grooves and textures, then wipe the high points off with a paper towel. Once I get the look I want, I tilt the piece up and let watered down acrylic drip down the surface, adding some more age and, you know, dirtiness to it. You can also go over areas with some dry brushes to add color variations or highlight edges. After staring at this for a while, I decided that I was going to bust out my random assortment of moss collection and add it to the build. The bulk will be with this adhesive backed moss that I got from the hobby store. You peel off the backing and plop it down. The backing is ridiculously strong so you can see me struggle for a bit here trying to get this stuff off of my fingers. To transition the moss a little better and work it down into the cracks, I use this terrain flocking that will help me to bridge those gaps. Luckily it is the same color as my moss. I just spread down static glue and sprinkle it on. Once on, I knock off the excess and scoop it up and use it for other areas. With that, I am finished. are finished here is the end result overall not too terribly bad of a build the template anytime you're building it from a single image or something like that like there's parts of it they're going to be a little off that you have to make adjustments to like this middle piece here uh, hopefully that's understandable and i showed you a way to kind of stretch the template so that it works but yeah maybe we'll try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to make a temple wall trap that terrifies people but really it's just like four and a half pounds of foam yeah maybe you'll get some Yay! and inevitably they're gonna ask you how'd you make that you can give them one of these tell them much props um i think i'm gonna go hang this on my man cave to ward off all the 
tremendous amount of visitors I have here to the Much Prop Studio. Peace out. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to continue to see builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.